All right, so I've done the videos on how to add audio and video onto an HTML file, but being able to use JavaScript to control that, being able to add closed captioning, that's the focus of this video. So I have the same page that I started out with the HTML video um, tutorial on. I have the same video element here, but I've added these buttons and I've got JavaScript connected to these so I can play, pause, stop, rewind, and so on. Let's take a look at some of the changes I've made in the HTML first. Same video element. I've got the same four sources, but I've also added a track element. So this track element, this is how to add closed captioning. The track element, if you want the closed captions to appear by default, you just need to add default to one of your track elements, and this will be the default one that shows up. Without it, the user has to go in and control it. So if I come in here, you can see captions. This label right here, English captions, that is my label from this track. If I had multiple tracks, I would see options for multiple labels there. This one I've defined it as being English. The kind is captions, so I've got subtitles or captions. Subtitles if you're translating the language. Captions if is if you're just capturing that information. There's a couple of other values, but subtitles and captions are the most common. Source. This is my file right here. So this is a web VTT file, which stands for web video text track. This file looks like this. So you have to start it with this web VTT, all in caps. That has to be the first line. Afterwards, you can add a comment if you want. If you want to add comments at other point, put the word note followed by a space and then whatever your comments are, one or more spaces. For each one of the pieces of text that you want to show up, you can add a number. So this is a reference number for it. You give a time range. The hours part is optional, so you can do it with or without this, but whatever you choose, both values have to be the same and you should be consistent throughout the file. So this is hours, minutes, seconds, and milliseconds. So you can define from 100 milliseconds in up until 2.999 seconds. This is the text I want to show. Then at three seconds to this time, this is what I'm going to show. From eight to 13 and a half, this is what I'm going to show. And you'll notice I've got some HTML inside here. There's a handful of HTML tags that we can use. You can use B for bold, I for italic, U for underline, or there's another one, V, which is a voice. So if you've defined voices in your style sheets, you can choose the name of the, uh, the voice. So if I was, let's say, to wrap this word around with uh, the V tag, I can put in the name of the voice like that. Now, I haven't defined any voices. I'm not going to get into voices in this video, but that's the other HTML tag that we can use. And then uh, the comment I already discussed. So those are my three points. Inside my HTML, this is the one track that points at that file. So I get this, and because I put default, it means when I come in here and I play my video, here's the text. So we are displaying the text here. Now, I'm also styling this. This yellow background with the black text, that's not default. If you come up into here, you can see that there is a CSS pseudo element called Q. So this defines all of the text tracks, the styling. By default, they're all going to be 20 pixels. They're all going to um, have this dark gray color, and then the bold I'm putting to uppercase and I'm making the text color red. So we have the cues that we can use to style those things. Now getting into the JavaScript, I'm defining a whole bunch of event listeners on the buttons that I've defined on my page. Uh, they're going to call the functions, basically play, pause, stop, rewind, and fast forward. These are my four functions. Inside my init function where I'm adding the event listeners, I'm console logging out both vid and vid with the object tags wrapped around it. So the difference between those, here we are. This is vid, 
which refers to the HTML element. However, if I wrap the square brackets, or sorry, the curly braces around this, it means it's doing the JavaScript destructuring and it's breaking it down into its various properties. So vid prototype has all of these properties. You want to find out what all the properties are? There we are. So just by wrapping the curly braces around the variable name inside of console.log, I get to see all this. This maybe has to do with whether or not the vid is able to play this mime type. I can put any one of the mime types that I defined here. So I can ask it if it's able to play any of those. I'll either get a maybe, a probably, or an empty string. Empty string means it can't do it at all. Probably, well, it, it probably will. And maybe is it doesn't know unless it actually tries to play it. All right, so that's our media types. And then the last thing here, if you want to change the volume of the video, any value from zero to one, any decimal value in between that range, zero is basically muted. One is 100% volume. 0.3, that's going to be 30% the volume. As I click in here, I'm muting it and putting it to full volume. But I am changing the volume when it loads to be this specifically. Let's say if I bump that up to 0.9, save it. That's the 30. And that's the 90%. I don't know how well you're picking up the difference in the volume on the video, but um, that's all there is to changing the volume is this. If you wanted to build your own volume control, you can have a volume up, a volume down, or a slider and just set it equal to adding or minusing. Uh, zero is the minimum number, one is the maximum number. Now for playing and pausing, two very simple methods. vid.play, vid.pause. Now the later browsers, what they did was they turned play into an actual promise. So when the video starts to play successfully, you'll get your then method. And that's what's going to write this out, this message. So if I hit play, and pause right here my play method is running there it is right here line 77 video is playing and then when I hit pause this is the one that I came out Let's scroll back down here so vid.play is a promise so you have a then and a catch then it worked catch it didn't there was an issue so you can do something on your page if it's unable to play it you can try to target a different track or load a different uh, video whatever you want to do or just tell the user that there's something wrong uh, for pause this one does not return a promise this is just pause it's an instantaneous thing play there could be a delay there could be buffering there could be some reason that's preventing it when this runs you know that the video is actually playing if the catch runs, you know that it failed. It wasn't that it's still waiting, it just, it failed. There was some sort of problem. Uh, now, I'm also, inside of these, writing out a whole bunch of messages. All this content right here. So, this has to do with those text tracks. That VTT file. This file right here. So, we can get the start time, the end time, the text, from any one of the queues. I have three queues inside this file. Now, if I want to access that information, I can't do it up here. It's going to fail. About half the stuff is going to fail inside the init function. It's not until you play that you've got full access to everything inside there. There will be definitely some issues if you try to do it before the video starts to play. Uh, play for the first time. Once it's played for the first time, you should have full access to all the information. So, we're doing the text tracks property of the video object. Now this is going to give me this variable here and then there can be potentially multiple tracks. So right here I'm doing console log TT. That is text tracks. So if we open this up to take a look at it. Here's a number zero. So this is the first text track. I only have the one track element on my page. So this zero tells me that one text track. If I open that up, inside of it, there's a property called queues. That's inside this file, those three queues that we had. 
that are all inside there. And inside that, for each one of these things, we've got an end time, we've got a start time, and we've got a text property, which is the actual text. This size is a percentage, the width inside of here. This is set at 100% width. We can put a different number inside here, say 50 as an example, and that would be 50% the width. So we've got um, all these properties that we can access inside of each one of the queues, which are inside of each one of the text tracks. So if you had multiple text tracks, you can use JavaScript to read through all of them and look at the content. All right, so that's all these properties that I'm doing here. And I'm going to put a copy of this file uh, as a code gist link in the comments. So you can go through and play around with all these properties as well. Um, I'm just quickly going through them because there's so much content here. Uh, current time and duration. These are two other very important things. Current time tells you the actual time. So if I minimize this part right now, we go down to here. This is line 95. Line 95, current time of duration. So I am at position 3.7 seconds in out of a total of 116.7 seconds. Current time tells you always what the current position is in seconds. Duration tells you the total number of seconds in the video. Uh, when I pause, um, it's just pausing the playing. It's not going back to the beginning. Now, there is no stop method. If you want to stop, then the difference between pause and stop is that pause stays at the current position. Stop jumps back to the beginning of whatever track is being played. That's just the standard functionality for pause and stop. So when you stop, in the JavaScript, you pause the video, but then you have to put the current time to zero. This is what puts the cue back at the very beginning. So when you hit play the next time, right up here, vid.play, when you do that, all that's going to happen is it resumes playing at whatever the current time is, which we've set back to zero. Now, I could change this to, say, 10. So I'll come back in here. I'll refresh my page. I'll hit play. I'll hit stop. And you'll see right here, I'm 10 seconds in. That's what it does. That's what changing the current time does. So I'm going to put that back to zero because that's what the functionality should be. Now, for rewind and fast forward, we're talking about skipping forward or skipping back inside of the uh, video. We could build a button that as you hold it down, it just continually skips forward. Like once a second, it jumps forward five seconds or something like that. You could use a set interval to do something like that. For me, I just want to do an instantaneous jump forwards or backwards 20 seconds. Current time minus equals 20 current time plus equals 20. So that's really all we need to do. Now there is a new method that's coming out which is based off of promises. Fast seek is the name of the method and you could do like minus 20 or positive 20 to jump forward or jump back. Uh, unfortunately this is not supported in most browsers right now. Uh, I believe the latest version of Firefox supports it. So this would be the promise version of moving around forwards or backwards. And then this is the version that is supported everywhere. Uh, even in the new versions of Firefox, this is still supported the current time way. Uh, and if you want to try both, just if vid.fastseek does not exist, then try this. Okay, so that is how to script. Um, really, it boils down to play, pause, current time and duration. Those are the four things that you're going to be working with. The duration and current time properties, the play and, play and pause methods. Those four things give you everything that you need to really control. Um, volume, yeah, that's a property that you can use if you want, if you want to be able to control the volume. Um, maybe you're just going to set it to a default value to have at the very beginning. And then tracks. This is how you do the closed captioning. Uh, so I will include this HTML file as a code gist, and I will also include a copy of this file 
as a code gist. So you can play around. You can download them, play around with them. I have a, uh, a GitHub repo that has all the video files in it as well and uh, the poster image as well. So I will include a link, link for that. So I hope this helps out. I uh, hope this has piqued your interest in video on the web and encourages you to start playing around with it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If this did help you, please share with other people. And as always, thanks for watching.